This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Did you also on November 1st experience the absolute whiplash of walking outside your door and having Christmas stuff just thrust in your face every which way? The commercials, your neighbors setting up their Christmas decorations, Santa Claus lurking behind every corner. I don't know if you've noticed, but... It's still fall. There's absolutely no shade to people who just really like celebrating Christmas. I'm sure this is how other people feel whenever it's July 13th and I'm like, Halloween. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that October is absolute insanity for me. I feel like I don't always get the biggest opportunity to really savor the fall season in October. So babes, it's November for me. Today I want to just get the creative juices flowing. I want to allow my brain a little bit of time to recharge creatively and experiment with some like fall inspired designs, maybe a little bit more geared towards cold weather. And hey, maybe even to appease big Christmas, we'll have a couple more festive designs in there. So where have I been creatively besides just an abundance of Halloween? <laughs> well, regular enjoyers of the channel will know that this summer I really leaned into a whimsy goth aesthetic, which during the winter months transitions into a full gothic aesthetic. I've also recently have become obsessed with medieval revival. In addition to that, I've also been on very much like a late 90s kick with my silhouette. 1990s and 1890s, no surprises there. So in terms of specific garments, I really love boleros and short little crop jackets, skirts that are actually warm enough because I am a perpetually cold person, very Victorian blousey looking garments, and finally waistcoats. So without any further ado, grab a blanket and a cozy beverage and if you want to draw along with me and let's get started. Alright, first up we have some extremely fall focused designs just completely revolving around autumn leaves. So the first one I'm working on here is inspired by the leaf dress that I made last year. I absolutely love that dress. I think it's super cute and surprisingly wearable for what it is, but it's still not that wearable. So this garment is me trying to brainstorm other styles that would make that idea of like gluing or sewing leaves onto fabric just a little bit more socially acceptable because the texture and the pattern is like like Dollar Tree leaves glued or sewn onto a top. I kept the overall design of the top very simple. It's just a bat sleeve top that ties under the bust. I feel like something like this could also be worn as a little jacket and look a little bit more natural that way. But this is something that I definitely want to try and make at some point. Maybe not super soon because I do want to sew the leaves on this time, but I think if executed the way I have it in my head, it would be really cute and maybe ever so slightly more socially acceptable. Next, we just have a little leaf inspired vest. I absolutely love vests. I love the historical influences in them. I love that they add a little bit more of a masculine edge to an outfit because of the roots and menswear. And I don't have enough of them. So here I'm just trying to design a little leaf inspired vest. This is nothing like groundbreaking. It's kind of just a leaf shape on a vest, but it could also be worn as a tank top. I have it like a high button up vest. And I think the fabric choices in the construction process could really elevate an item like this. I think something like wool would be a really interesting fabric choice to this if I could get the right colors. I also think hand embroidering on the little leaf veins would make this look really good with maybe like a gold floss. There's a lot of possibilities for a piece like this, but I think it would look super cute. Finally here we have a leaf inspired waistcoat and get used to waistcoats because there's gonna be a lot of them in this video because your girl loves a waistcoat. And until recently, I don't think I owned any of them. Like, this is a garment I have loved since I was probably 13 years old, but where does a 13 year old get a waistcoat? I still don't know the answer to that question. Now I'm an adult and I can make my own ridiculous waistcoats. This one is once again super whimsy goth inspired. It's got a darker, deeper autumn leaf color palette. Maybe the leaves are dying a little bit, meaning it has more burgundies and crimsons, which are some of my favorite colors. I think they also complement me very well. And hear me out, fabric choices for this, like suede, different colors of suede layered on top of each other. Once again, maybe some hand embroidery. I would also maybe be open to some gold clasps down the front instead of lacing. I think that would also look really good. Where I would get my hands on this many different shades of suede, I don't know, but 
I can dream. Hi, before we move on with the video, if you were ever interested in seeing these designs up a little bit closer, they are available on my portfolio website. You can see a whole bunch of the costume designs that I've done for other videos and this video on there, which of course is hosted by this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for hosting your websites, your portfolios, your online stores, and they even have resources for marketing and analytics. With their professionally designed, fully customizable website and portfolio templates, you can build a website in just about an hour. For those of you who are interested in portfolio building, tools like automatic image scaling allow you to upload all of your gallery pieces and then Squarespace automatically arranges them for you in an aesthetically pleasing way. You also have full control to customize the overall aesthetics of your website like text, colors, media, and website page varieties. And the fact that it's your own website instead of a social media profile like Instagram allows you to have a wide array of website pages, including, if you want it, your own e-commerce shop. Squarespace has all of the e-commerce tools that you could possibly need, whether you're a small seller like me or running a full-fledged e-commerce business. And if you are selling more small-scale art-focused things like prints and stickers, they also allow you to link to a print-on-demand service so that it's way less trouble on your end and also a lot more sustainable. So if you're interested in sharing your work with the world through a website or portfolio, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to some cozy autumn nonsense. Right now, I am obviously lacking in a little bit of inspiration, so whenever I was working on some of the designs in this next batch, I actually went to the local botanical gardens to draw whatever I was there and just take in some of the nature, try to get away from the internet and not be quite as influenced by Pinterest. Next up, we have a page of whimsical shrugs and boleros and little jackets. For whatever reason, I have been on such a bolero shrug kind of kick lately. I think they just go really hand in hand with the layering that I like to do whenever I create my little outfits. And since, like I said, I am a perpetually cold person, I think these are especially going to come in handy for me during the winter months. I have a bat slash gothic architecture inspired shrug. Uh, in the winter months, I completely freeze into my gothic aesthetic and everything I where it gets really dark. A lot of it is just frankly all black. So I find that it's helpful to have a little bit more purple in my wardrobe. I also like a lot more texture, you know, satins, velvets, lace, things like that. So even if I'm wearing a super dark outfit, there's still some visual interest going on. I always love a lot of contrasting texture in an outfit, but I feel like it's especially important with something like this that's very dark. So for this design, naturally, I went for some giant angular bat sleeves and then around the shoulders the shape is a little bit more of a capelet with a high collar just to make everything really gothic and dramatic and I have no idea how I would sew this in real life. Maybe I would have to paint it on. I mean embroidering this would take my entire life. But to give that visual interest this piece is rounded out with a bunch of little gothic architecture motifs and a bunch of purple and sparkly beading in a couple of key places. Next up I've also been super super into the whole Victorian ghost aesthetic recently and I don't happen to own any pieces that really fit into that. I was very disappointed to find that out during the whole Halloween season this year and I am about to do a lot of things to try to solve that problem because who doesn't want to in the dark winter months just float around in a ghostly little nightgown. It is also very inspired by my gothy princess dress because ever since I made that I'm always thinking this is really great for this outfit but boy it would really look good if it was white. So I'm thinking I am going to make a very similar dress in white, but give it a slightly different cut. And finally, to round these out, bring it a little bit more back to fall, we have just a pumpkin bolero shrug, whatever you want to call it. This is very inspired by the pumpkin blouse that has real costumes made. I saw it and I was like, that would be also extremely cute if it was a little cropped jacket. So I feel like I want to make one of those at some point and also maybe embroider around the collar area. Just make it look extremely like this is something my grandma made me and I'm wearing it because it's a sleigh. At the end here, I thought I'd also throw in one of the boleros that I didn't end up making whenever I was working on my moth boleros video. I just did not have 
have enough time to make four of these, but I do want to try to make this eventually. This one is very similar in design to the other ones, but it is based on the Madagascar Comet Moth, which is one of my favorite moths. I recently saw one in person, and it was even more beautiful than it is in internet photos. I definitely want to pay homage to it by making a garment inspired by it at some point. Next, I am just working on some designs for some random tops. A lot of these are like pretty disorganized, but one of the ideas that I have been really wanting to play around with is the idea of casual armor, casual chainmail, and just designs inspired by different draping chains and metalwork, especially designs that have like a very celestial theme because that is one of the main motifs that I wear in my clothing. This one is sort of a chain bodice and then it also has some armor bits in there. It has a lot of sun and moon and star motifs, but then also some nods to gothic architecture. I would love to figure out how to make a piece like this more wearable, maybe by using some leather for the armor pieces. That way it's still pretty structural. It's a material that we are used to wearing. It's a little bit more comfortable than just metal, but it could still be painted to look bright and metallic. Here I also played around with the idea of making a Queen of Hearts inspired waistcoat. I play a lot of cards with my friends and in my free time, so I feel like that deck of cards Harley Quinn aesthetic is kind of ingrained in my personality a little bit. As you know, I've also been really into like blood drip beating and that sort of thing. It feels really romantic even though it's gory and I think it would just be really cute for like a Queen of Hearts inspired look. I feel like this one is definitely geared a little bit more towards the costuming side of my work and less so towards the wearable side, but part of me doesn't care because I feel like a Queen of Hearts inspired look would be a really good Valentine's project for next year, so I might expand on that in the meantime. On this sheet, I also wanted to play around with the idea of a gothic architecture inspired sheer bodice. Just a super simple sheer tank top, but with little gothic designs and embellishments all over it. Almost like a harness, but way more detailed. I think this aesthetic would be so cool if I was able to pull it off. But if I tried to make this, I do legitimately think that it would be the hardest thing I've ever tried to make. I don't even want to think about how many hours of pinning and stitching this would require. But if I was able to pull it off, I feel like it would look super good. I would wear the heck out of this. And just for good measure, I also added a matching shrug to this because I feel like that would really round out the look. It's a little bit simpler, but it has some like pointy cathedral inspired shoulder pads that I feel like would be so cool if I figured out how to make them. Oh, it would be the death of me, but I really want to try to make this. While I was at it, I also figured that I would throw in this design from October that was going to be a video, but I didn't end up having enough time to make it. It is again another waistcoat. Just be prepared for a lot of waistcoats in this video, but originally I was going to make the bat wings from my Halloween costume project a separate video so that I would have time to articulate them and all of that, but I didn't end up having enough time. And in that theoretical video, I was going to do like a whole little bat themed costume with a bat waistcoat. And even though I didn't have a chance to do it, I still really like this design. I think that it is super cute and I would absolutely wear the heck out of this. The waistcoat itself is pretty simple. A little bodice cut at the waist that has some bat wing detailing and ribbing on it. Same with the skirt part. Really traditional design, just cut to look like bat wings and supposedly starched if I could do that to make them a little bit more structured. And then puff sleeves at the top fanning out into a very appropriately named bat sleeve. I think the thing that would make this garment feel particularly unique and special is the construction methods and like fabric choice. I have this amazing cocktail dress that I thrifted a couple of years ago and the cut of the neck line in the bodice is kind of made to look like a bat. It's really sharp. It's one of the dresses that I wear as a vampire costume. And I have always really loved the way that it is boned and structured, just the way it feels. And I've always wanted to sort of like recreate something that is similar or matching. I feel like this little overdress would be a good companion piece and jacket to that little cocktail dress. I think they would look fantastic together if I can figure out like a good material and a good construction method. That being said, if you have any relevant knowledge for some of the materials choices and construction methods that I'm talking about in this video. One of my favorite parts of making these videos is that I open up a whole new knowledge base from you guys that I do not have myself. A lot of times in these videos, I'm talking about doing things that I have never tried before, using materials that I have never even touched with my own hands. And you guys are always really good about proposing different techniques and ideas and matching me with good methods of making something. If I'm like, um, I have no idea how I would make this, but I think it would be cool, so feel free to leave suggestions in the comments. You are being officially solicited. While I was discussing this, you might have noticed we are on to a completely different
different design. Anyways, this is a little leaf dress that I was trying to design for a November video. I made my autumn leaf skirt as a part of my big Halloween project and I love the method so much and how it looks and I really want to just make a whole dress like that. So I'm trying to brainstorm design ideas and I'm kind of glossing over this one because I don't really feel particularly strong about it. It's kind of just okay. At this point, it's not something that I would really want to make, but I thought that it was still cute enough to make the cut for this video. Basically, I think I'm struggling because of what I want to make is very close to things that other people have already made. I'm very much trying to put my own spin on it, but I haven't settled on something that I like enough to actually try and make, so this idea is just going to be kind of shelved for now. Next, I'm just working on some dresses, partly based on some fabric that I recently thrifted in that big haul, if you know, you know. And this first one is just a full-on white lacy dress, once again, kind of inspired by my whole Victorian ghost aesthetic that I'm trying to lean into here, but largely inspired by number one, this infamous look by Stevie Nicks, and also inspired by this beautiful Somnia Romantico waistcoat. The crimes I would commit to get my hands on this waistcoat. Unfortunately, Somnio Romantica is a line run by one person who hand makes all the clothes and I don't know when something like this is going to be made again in my size. So I'm going to make something similar, but not the same at all, as to respect the work of this fine woman. In this batch, I am also experimenting with designing yet another Luna Moth inspired gown. Listen, I have been trying to design a Luna Moth inspired gown all year and no matter what I do, I just can't get one that I like enough to actually try to make. I've literally tried probably like five times at this point to make a design that I like for this dress. Still nothing. I do think this design comes the closest. I generally really like it. It really leans into the fantasy side of things. It also leans into that armor gown aesthetic, which is something that I was super obsessed with last year and I have still yet to make one. But I still feel like this could use another few iterations until I get it right because this is a dress that I really, really want to get right. And last on this page, I am designing something that I would call a New Year's inspired gown. Once again, using one of the fabrics that I recently thrifted. There is so much of this. So I want to design something that is very over the top voluminous. Basically something that has that old Hollywood glam quality to it. Halfway between something that you could wear just lounging around your house and something that you could wear on like a red carpet. For some reason I feel like that is very much the vibe for New Year's Eve. If I have enough time to do all of the elaborate beading and chains that I have in this design, I would love to do this for a New Year's project. So let me know if you maybe want to see that. Here, I bet you didn't see this one coming, we have e even more waistcoats. So these are waistcoats that are a little bit more just exercises in design, getting ideas out, experimenting a little bit, and less so things that I could actually see myself making. I think some of the designs are kind of cute. I might expand on them in other design sessions and other designs, but maybe not these designs exactly. But first here, I am experimenting around a little bit with a pink waistcoat jacket kind of situation. Again, something that's a little bit old Hollywood inspired, but also a little bit ballet core inspired. This mostly came because I have some feather applique that I was going to use for a project and then that project had to go on hold because of the SAG after strike. So I was going to maybe use it for something else and that's what I had in mind designing this. And then the SAG after strike is now set to end. So I might actually be able to do that project after all. Spoilers, it's Odette's dress from Barbie Swan Life. It was supposed to come out when the Barbie movie was supposed to come out and then things happened. Now I'm thinking I'm probably just gonna go back to making the Odette dress because I do really want to make that dress but my own version. And honestly, I'm just gonna slip the design for that dress in here. Here it is. I was super excited to make this during the summer. I ordered so much fabric for it and then was like, oh no, what do I do with this fabric now? Because I didn't know how long I was gonna kind of be on hold for making this. But now I'm thinking I might try to make this early next year. So if you're excited about the idea of this project, sound out in the comments below so that I can get excited about it again. I feel like it's gonna be really cold if I make this in like January, but it might fit in with that like icy, cool toned aesthetic, sort of. <laughs> Anyways, next I am messing around with the idea of waistcoats, but make them casually just armor. I've really been trying to experiment with the idea of morphing and subverting materials as of late. Just trying to expand on my design language a little bit in that way, because sometimes you just run out of ways to interpret something within your work. Casual armor, it has been done before, beautifully I might add. But what if you do armor but just make it soft instead of hard? So a little waistcoat 
coat that's inspired by the general shape of a set of armor, but it's all cozy and warm and nice. And for those of you who are going crazy out there, because you're like, soft armor already exists, what about Gambeson and Brigandine? Well, I did not forget about those. That is what our next little design here is inspired by. Basically trying to make a casual Gambeson waistcoat, because I love the little quilting technique that is on Gambeson. I think it looks so cozy and frankly pretty cool. And yeah, I would love to walk around my everyday life stealthily wearing my Gambinson inspired little jacket. I'm just not sure if this is the design yet. We'll see. I am gonna try to pick up the pace because I do feel like I'm taking too long at explaining things, but this next page is just a set of whimsy coats. All of them a little bit inspired by How's Moving Castle because that is, of course, my favorite Studio Ghibli film. This first one is, of course, a little capelet inspired by Hal's little coat that he wears at the beginning of the film. I've been told that I look like him before, probably just because I have blonde hair. That's it. But I do feel a little bit of a connection to Hal, probably just because we have the exact same taste in interior design. Speaking of interior design, I also have this little whimsy goth late 90s inspired duster coat. This one is also inspired by fabric that I recently thrifted that is just so beautiful. It's quilted, it's got little embroidery on it. I absolutely love it and I want to wear it on my body. And I feel like this style of coat, since it's kind of square and boxy and there's a lot of just real estate, would be the perfect style and candidate for this beautiful cut of fabric. And finally here, last but not least, we have a little Howl Raven form inspired capelet. I really, really want to make like a Howl inspired capelet. I feel like it just works. It makes sense. I feel like it would be super dramatic. I also feel like a little blue calcifer inspired bolo tie would look really good with a capelet like this. I feel like it would be giving mean headmaster at a school that would yell at you, but in a fashion way. All right, this design is something that I did so early this year with the full intention of making it. I had it all mapped out in my head and I was like, this is gonna be good. This is gonna look so good. And then I did the design and I was like, well, actually, I'm not so sure about this now. But if you haven't guessed so far, this is an armor set inspired by the famed strawberry dress. Yes, I am late to every trend. This dress is completely irrelevant now. We have moved on as a culture. Don't worry about it. I have not. This concept is inspired by people trying to figure out how they would alter the strawberry dress to make it a little bit more their personal style. And I really like the strawberry dress. I think it's really cute, but it's not really my personal style. Uh, mine would be just the black version that already exists. But my version of making it my own was just to kind of try to translate it into a set of armor. Uh, but I think this project would be super fun. I would love painting all of the little strawberries on it. It's very Rococo inspired, over the top, giving 2006 Sofia Coppola, Marie Antoinette, I still really want to make this, but maybe with a slightly more refined design. I don't know. Do you guys want to see this? I'll make it if you do. If you don't, who knows? Here I am designing, you know, just take one guess. One guess and you'll probably be right. Yep, you're right. It's waistcoats. Even more waistcoats. <laughs> to be fair, one of them is a little bit more of a dress, but first up we have a rose waistcoat. This one is basically just inspired by a particular shape of corset that I haven't messed around with too much. And then also just the idea of roses in general, medieval things, renaissance things. I don't know. I don't have any rose inspired garments, which is weird because I am basic, it is my favorite flower, but I want to wear them on my body. That's what I do with things that I like. They go on my body. I think this would be a super cute romantic fashion item. I think I would also do the medieval route of having like detachable sleeves so that I can wear it like sleeveless too. Moving on to the next design, I want to do an icicle inspired dress, maybe for the holiday season. I don't know if I would get to both that and a new year's dress. I might have to pick and choose, but I have a lot of blue sheer fabric lying around and also like a blue base fabric that I could use. Basically just coming up with projects to use up different fabrics that I have around, but I think this would be super fun. Kind of a little bit showgirl inspired with a fantasy twist. Also an opportunity for me to practice like a super structured bodice, which is something that I want to get better at. Anyways, last on this page, we have another attempt at a leaf dress. This one a little bit more medieval inspired, a little bit court gesture looking. I think with this concept, I would use 
use some sheer fabrics to create the leaves, maybe trying to like dye them to get some color variation, trying to actually serge the edges. I would have to get a serger for this, but I think that would save me a ton of time. I do like this option better than the previous leaf dress because I think it feels a little bit more me. It feels a little bit more original. That being said, I still don't think we're quite there. I think this one still is on the drawing board in terms of whether or not I might make it eventually. And last in this video, we have a truly unhinged out of nowhere set of designs. Just some chairs, man. I swear I have a reason for this. Someone suggested in the comments that I make a throne of some kind. I don't remember who commented this. I don't have the comment on hand, but it is something that piqued my interest and something that I think I want to do at some point. I just think it would be nice to have a chair that I can sit in that's a little fancy whenever I film. Also just what a fun project. I don't know if I would do this anytime soon because it would require a little bit of space that I don't necessarily have, but I did three different designs, one that would match my mushroom lamp and mushroom mirror, kind of a fairy core inspired design, one that is a little bit gothic inspired that looks amazing, no idea how I would make it, but I do want it, and one that is kind of like biblically accurate angel inspired. This one I probably would not make, but it does look pretty dang cool. And with some chairs, that'll do it for this week, folks. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I know this was probably maybe a little bit of a longer video. I did a lot of rambling here, but I hope you enjoyed just watching the designs, hearing my thought process, and brainstorming a little bit. I hope that you maybe drew along with me if that is something that you do. If you want to get a closer look at the designs, they will be in my portfolio site, link in the description. But finally, as always, the biggest thank you for these videos goes to my lovely patrons and especially my executive producers. For Crimson Moon 04, Rest Easy, Lirael, Liana, Armler Jean, Anubix, Breeza, Elizabeth Smith, Bean the Bread, I Hang Out with Cats at Parties, Bobo McFoe, Freya Wolf, Gravity Drop, Sweet Winter Garden, Katie, Hypnos, India Gloom, Enozine, Megan Penlan, Meeks Hunter, Eloquent Silence, Lovisa, Thea Maia, Agent Dot Sketchy, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Shay Lee, Zyle S, Dodo, Cat, Small Underscore Creeper, Francesca Sliwa, Freedom and Gus Gus, Sam Alama Ding Dong, Rose Kofrick, Rose Jaconai, Phoenix, Brian, the cat buses early, and Miss Wicked.